Welcome back to Sketchy Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to not rebuild a two-stroke snowmobile engine. As you can see here, this piston was incorrectly installed. They have to go a specific direction so that the rings do not catch any of these ports inside cylinder walls here. If you do install the piston incorrectly, you are left with this situation, this situation, and a lot of this. I'm not even sure if this is the bad side, but one of these is really bad. This one is not too bad. But anyway, so moral of the story is I did not do my research. I put this engine together wrong. I installed both pistons the incorrect way. I put the uh, the rings and everything. Well, the rings were on the right way, but the piston, apparently this arrow here is supposed to point towards the exhaust side. Well, this is pointing towards the intake side and I'm assuming so is this one. And what happened was we scored up the, the jugs here and uh, those are all scored up pretty good. Ruined the head, ruined the piston. And uh, so that being said, I picked up three more Safari 377 engines. Now, what we have here are three Safari 377 engines. Now, this one here is locked up. She's seized. Oh, can't even rotate that, but she's seized up. The casing is cracked there for the where the fan goes. And there's that hole, but that's either busted, but there's supposed to be a hole there anyway. But what I'm thinking is this has most likely good jugs and good heads on it. We will swap them onto that motor up there. This motor here uh, rotates freely. And uh, I can't tell if it has a lot of compression or not because I cannot physically pull it over with one hand. So I'm going to have to set this up and get the engine to stay in place so I can pull it over and do a proper compression test on it. We have this motor here, which is also free, freely moving. We compression tested this one at 75 on either cylinder. The compression tester could be off. I'm not sure. It is a cheaper compression tester, so it may not be perfect, but we have even compression on both sides on this engine. I know this engine here also has spark, so I know this one will run worst case scenario. The only thing is, if you take a look at my engine here, it is equipped with the electric start. We are fancy like that. You know, we got the electric start up in here. Both of these, this one has no electric start. This one has no electric start. This one does have electric start. So I'm hoping this one has 120 PSI compression or more. Uh, if it has 100, we might just run it anyway for now, for the time being. But this one here, we're hoping it has good compression. We'll put that aside there for now. There is oil you can see coming out of here because I actually did put some two-stroke oil inside the cylinders of this one while I was turning it over just because I wanted to make sure the cylinder walls were going to be nice and lubricated while we were doing or trying to pull it over. This one is seized up, so we're going to pull this one apart, take a look inside, see what is going on there. This motor is 1985. These ones could be newer motors i'm assuming because they have different ignition system than this motor here this one is equipped with what i believe we call as a cdi box i could be wrong but i think that's what it's called but it's got this box that's bolted on the side it has the wires coming off of the stator or whatever it's called the timing stuff that's all up inside of here and that plugs into the box which plugs into our singular ignition coil that we have right here. We'll call this one good motor number one because it does rotate. Like I said, it has small amounts of compression and uh, that's what we were looking for. Now, 
what I was saying about the ignition system is if you take a look, we have this standard plug here, right? Now this has our powers, a couple grounds off of it, and this one here has also the same sort of deal going on. It's got the same plug. So this will plug right into the factory harness for the Safari, the 1985 Skidoo Safari. Now, what we're looking at is we have a different ignition system going on. So you can see instead of us having this box on the side, this motor actually does not have the spot for it to bolt onto. So we're left with this is a different year engine. This is I'm going to say it's a 1988, 89, could be, a, could be a 90s, could be a 90s with a single carb, so I'm not sure which model that would be on or when they went to dual carb, but as you can see, all the wires come out of here, and then they go up into two separate ignition coils for this. So this whole ignition system we could run on the other, our inside our safari snowmobile. All right, so up on the table now is the seized up motor. Yeah, she's pretty seized. And it doesn't like to stand up by itself. Now, what we're gonna do is pop these spark plugs out of the MPV blaster down through the intake, or not the intake, sorry, down through the cylinders. See if it'll get freed up because if the rings are seized, if we go to try to pull the jugs off, well, it might be a little challenging. You know what I just remembered? I've got PV Blaster in this spray bottle. And that will make it a little bit easier. Well, if it would spray. Great, it seems like nothing I have works properly. Okay, option number four. So we're just gonna dump this down the cylinder here. Oh shit, fuck. Dump some of that down, let her sit for a little bit, see if she'll free up. In the meantime, we're gonna try and do a better compression test on that one over there. And we'll just... Okay, what's going on? There we go. Holy shit, I see the whole fucking engine just moves. So this second cylinder is also reading 75 PSI compression. Both motors, this one and this one, both read 75 PSI. The only thing is this motor here seems way easier to pull over, you know, than this one does. But <clears throat> the problem is here, I don't have any We'll leave that. I don't have any way of checking to see if that compression tester is bad. It's brand new, so I'm hoping that it works good, but I have no way to verify like a good motor that's like, oh, I know this motor is a good engine. So we will continue for now disassembling the seized motor, I'm trying to get this clutch off of here. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, what we're trying to do here is take two good motors or sorry, we got two shit motors right here. We're gonna try to combine them, make one good one. All right, I'm not sure if I got it yet. All I did was just stick a screwdriver up behind here and it started to move. So I'm wondering. There you go. That's how that cover comes off. Will it come off as easy on this one? No, this one's gonna be more stuck. Next question is, does our clutch pillar fit? She's a little tight, she's a little tight. Now what I'm gonna recommend guys, put some grease on this end here or anti seize or something cause it's gonna be a tight fit and uh, we don't wanna mess this up. Cleaner. Shoot it up in there. Then we're gonna grab some anti seize. The reason I did the brake cleaner is just to hopefully clean out some stuff. Gonna take some anti seize on the threads of the bolt here. Oh. 
Don't worry, that was just the motor plate that fell. All right. Alright, so I just took the bolt out, cleaned up the threads, put some more grease on there, dumped some PB blaster down the center of it. Well, my friends, that did the trick. I dumped some PB blaster down the center, tightened it up a little bit, and got really stiff. I gave it just a little nudge, popped right off. So I guess that's how you can take this um, primary clutch off of 377 Safari. Now we can actually see where the crank seal goes and uh, figure out how to replace on that because this motor is going to need a crank seal. So basically, this motor needs full seals. This motor is junk, I'm saying, because the wiring is non-existent. And um, th that's basically why. So hopefully it's going to be able to bot the bottom. <laughs> I can't even speak. We want to use the bottom end of this one. So we want to learn how to do everything on this one so when we go to this one we don't mess this one up and then hopefully the pistons out of this one are good we're gonna find that out soon but let's start tearing this thing down there's the intake off of that side now this cover Pop off. Cylinder number one looks to be in fairly decent condition. Let me wipe this off. Looks to be in actually very good condition. Here's cylinder one. Yeah. There we go. Set this aside. Take cylinder two out. A whole stud came with it. But, uh, no big deal. Cylinder two. Appears to be also in good condition. Just put those on top of each other. The piston does not look too good on this side. This one looks pretty good. We're going to try to clean all this junk off. Jug is out. There's a head gasket for you. The inside of here, I was about to say it looks rusty, but oh, it is rusty. Nothing a little bit of cylinder honage can't fix. You can see up in there. We got a little bit of rust. Nothing we can't use a cylinder hone to clean up. Now, got one good piston over here. Will this jug come out? Oh, it looks like it's coming. Jug number two is out. Again, you could probably just take a cylinder home to this, clean that up. Come up along here, we got, yeah, that's why the bottom of this block is not 
prettiest in comparison. It's a lot of PB blaster, but even the rust off of there. So yeah, I mean, we could clean this one up, but like I said, it's missing the wiring. No idea why, but I think these pistons are good. These jugs are good. I just want to show you guys something funny here. So originally I thought maybe the rings were just seized in the jug. And then um, upon further inspection here, it seems like the actual um, bottom end is locked up. Can't even rotate it at all. So uh, anyway, I got one of the, take that out also. We got one of the pistons out. Um, so what I recommend is just take one of these sir clips out and uh, when you do that what I recommend is just put your thumb sort of over top of it like this and then stick like a little pick or a screwdriver in there just to push it over to the side so it doesn't fly out because you don't want to lose one of these. Leave the other one in place you can see that there and then uh, just take the, this guy out the wrist pin just be careful with it. So I'm going to do the same thing here I'm just going to reach in pull out this one clip, push the wrist pin through, pop this piston out, and then we'll get to tearing the rest of the, yeah, look at this, tearing the rest of the uh, block down. One other thing we got a problem now is the wrist pin is actually seized inside this um, piston itself. This is pretty difficult to turn. I just freed it up, but this wrist pin is going to be a challenge to get out for sure. All right, so front cover is off. There's just four Allen head bolts on the side there. <clears throat> but you can see the whole ignition system is removed off of this one, which I'm not sure if it makes it more difficult if it's still on here to take this cover off. I don't remember exactly. But, yes, now this is off. And then you need a big socket to take this off. I don't know exactly what size. All right, so, and just like that, the whole bottom end is off. Uh, it's just a couple 13s and a couple 10s. Use a little pry tool and uh, she'll come right off. Now, there's all these things that we have to do. So this is the crank seal right here. All right. So this is the crank seal. It'll be the other crank seal. Now, the question is, how do you replace this crank seal? If you're wondering why I'm not being gentle, it's because look at this cr this whole crank, man. It's literally seized. So that's why I, I don't care that much. Or this nut off. So I think we have to take this nut off. Okay, so to get this off, all we did was loosen up the socket. It actually was loose. I have a feeling someone was into this motor previously because lots of the bolts seem to not be too tight. Uh, and I'm saying that someone sold the ignition out of this one anyway. But that's how you take the other crank seal off. You can see this one was definitely shot as well. But uh, yeah, you just take the nut off here, give it a couple taps with the hammer, and it slid right off. Now, I'm sure we can probably pop the crank out of here. Hopefully we can build one good engine out of all these components, have a good runner, have one that we know is going to make good compression. Hopefully this one will make good compression. And then we will be able to determine if when we put this all together, like I said, if this makes only 75 PSI compression, then these two motors are probably good. But what I, what I mean, because my compression tester might be bad. So that's why I'm saying if it makes 75, then maybe my compression tester is wrong. Because for both cylinders to be 75, like these two are 75, these two are 75. Are the odds of that just like really good? Okay, there we have it. This is the complete teardown of the Safari 377 Rotax motor. The bottom end on this girl here is locked up pretty good. We got a few seized up bearings, a couple that work all right, and a couple that just don't at all. Now, what we're going to do is just continue the same process on this motor over here. We're gonna strip this whole thing down. We're still waiting on gaskets and stuff, so I'm not gonna fully disassemble and take apart the whole entire bottom end. 
right now, but I'm gonna do that off camera. And when it comes to reassembly time, we'll pick the camera back up. Essentially what we're doing is exactly everything we just did on this motor. So we gotta pull the clutch off, pull the front cover off, all that jazz. And then uh, we can go ahead, start cylinder honing and cleaning up all these gasket surfaces. Thought I would just give you guys one more tip. If you're trying to take this cover off here, you can actually thread two bolts in there and it'll just push the whole cover off. Okay, everyone, I'm just disassembling this motor right now and I figured out where the O-rings go. See inside that groove? This O-ring is split, but notice how there isn't one here. There isn't one here. There's one sort of pieced along here. So it looks like every time there's a little ridge here, there's supposed to be an O-ring inside each one of these grooves. So it's a really good thing that I noticed this because you can see right where that O-ring is split. So this motor definitely needed a rebuild All right, it's a new day, so I just got this harmonic balancer puller to pull the uh, flywheel off of here. And uh, that's basically what you're gonna need. Comes with all these bolts and everything. Funny thing is, I bent every single one of these bolts. Pulling this out, not sure why, but that's annoying. But yeah, I just put the impact on it, blasted it off. And uh, now we have a fully, pull the front seal off here. We've got a stripped down crank. And uh, we're gonna go ahead now. I also picked up the cylinder hone. So we are gonna go ahead, we're gonna cylinder hone these cylinders. Uh, we're just gonna use some PB blaster. Cylinder hone that, those, we're gonna clean everything. And I'll get back to you guys once I do a full cleanup on everything, all the mating surfaces, and I will be coming back, not sure if it'll be tomorrow, but one day soon with all the new piston rings and all the new gaskets. Okay, everybody, welcome back. So we got everything cleaned up. I got the heads all cleaned up. I got the cylinders cleaned up. I took the honing tool to them, just got it from Princess Auto. And uh, that's what the cylinders should be looking like. So those are looking pretty decent. This one, it's got a little bit right there. But anyway, I took a lot of brake clean to them. I recommend if anyone goes in depth like this on this kind of build, get yourself at least four cans of brake clean. You're going to want it just to make sure you can clean everything really, really good. And... When you go to assemble, everything's going to be nice and clean. And then we're going to use some oil as we assemble everything. But I cleaned up the lower end of the block. Got all the old rubber seal stuff out. The bearings in the bottom end here, you know, these are from 1985. They're probably not perfect. I'm not sure if you can put grease inside of these. Because I'm thinking maybe I'll just throw a little bit of grease inside of them. But I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm also not sure how we get the uh, O-rings up into here to do these two O-rings. That will be a challenge for sure. But anyway, just so we're clear, this is the uh, bottom end off of the engine that came out of my snowmobile. This is the top end off of the seized motor. And we are combining the two going to be reusing these pistons uh, just to clean them up a little bit. I have new rings for them so I'm going to be throwing on brand new piston rings and the good the good new cylinders and uh, again this is the one that came off of my motor because this is what happens when you install them wrong is you're left with this. I actually I think it was this one. I actually, I tested this cylinder hone. All right, brand new day. It's the weekend, so we actually are working in the daytime instead of the night. Here we have everything laid out. We have the gasket kit. Here's the part number for the 377. We have two new piston rings. There's part numbers for those also. 
do we have a bag of spare parts with o-rings the oil seals here and um stuff that was never previously done my dad originally did a top end on the original motor and never did the bottom end so this motor has over 10,000 kilometers on it without doing a bottom end so we also have to replace these right here you can see these little rubber nubs those go in there all right so i just pulled the first little rubber piece out like i said it just goes right in there and uh, you kind of see the difference it doesn't look like there's much wear you can kind of see like the swelling on this one versus these ones but because we're doing a full rebuild we may as well replace everything and do it all properly so that sort of just pops in there okay so we went ahead we installed these things they do sit pretty loose uh, i think that's just sort of how they're supposed to be because once there is compression on them they swell up not sure how much i was recording had a problem with the camera but anyway we got these oil rings installed like i said these o-rings are pretty stretchy so you can just stretch them over top of the crank get them in place make sure you put a nice coat of oil on the bearings pour some oil on the needle bearings for the connecting rod put some oil on these bearings try to put some oil just in this bearing here and the other two bearings up here put some oil in here some oil there make sure you replace these little rubber dowels here they will be loose when you put them in so you want to install everything like i'm doing right now so we'll put the crank on here and uh, then we can go ahead install the front seals where the flywheel goes and the clutch side so we are going to lube up the inside of here just because this is where the crank is spinning and you want to make sure there's going to be oil on that okay so we have the front seals installed here uh, it's easiest to do it without putting the bottom half on so you're just going to kind of lift up the crank a little bit make sure there's lots of oil on there it'll snap in place same with this side so again we're just going to put some more oil on everything down here and some people will debate there's no gasket here from factory keep that in mind some people will debate that you should put a gasket here now this is going to affect bearing tolerance and everything so if you're going to put a gasket you're going to use some sort of gasket maker like we have here Something that is going to be fuel and oil resistant because if you have any problems with fuel or oil re non-resistant RTV, what's going to happen is the RTV is going to deteriorate inside of here and then the bottom half of the casing will become loose, the tolerances will be off and you'll most likely mess something up with the connecting rod or mess up one of these bearings. So this is going to be up to you if you're going to do it you just want to do a super thin coat of something that is meant to be used for this application if not you can use no gasket because these machine surfaces are supposed to be tight enough and you shouldn't have any issues and notice they had the connecting rods kind of pointing at the side here you want to make sure those come through the correct holes down here and uh don't do what I did, but you can see this seal and everything is not tight right now. So we actually have to push everything sort of downwards. You can see the front there too. So all these have to sort of go downwards. And as we put this down and torque everything down, it's going to compress. Okay, so when we go ahead and reinstall these bolts, basically you just want to do like a cross pattern. So this one, then this one. And this one and this one you know this one this one sort of just do that all over these ones from what i read are torqued to 15 foot pounds mine may be a little bit over torqued and these ones i didn't see a torque spec but i would not crank those down because they will probably snap um crank rotates nice and smoothly that's what we want and now make sure you put this thing in first you want to set base timing this is where we're going to set base timing at basically right in the center and that should bring us right around factory spec and uh we should have a good running machine as long as all of this works properly so we're going to go ahead put the allen head bolts back in place we can then 
slip the flywheel back on. We can go ahead, flip the block back around and get to installing the pistons. Okay, so when you install the piston rings onto the piston here, what you wanna make sure that, this will come out of here. This piston ring here goes on the bottom section, right there. You can see there's no ridge to it, it's just a flat piston ring. This one here has a little lip to it, just like that. And it is going to go onto the piston just like this. With that lip pointing upwards. You can see when it's on the piston, it should look like this. Make sure you use a lot of oil for both of these because on first startup, you're gonna want that oil. Now, when you install said piston onto the connecting rod, it really matters which way this is going. When it's inside the jug, it is going to depend where this opening is on the piston ring here. And if the opening on the piston ring is on the wrong spot on the jug, it's gonna catch an exhaust or an intake. So I'm not fully done building this, but I have to test and make sure the pistons are on the right way because we don't wanna mess this up. Now, keep in mind the head, the slanted part here is going to be the exhaust side. The flat part here is going to be the intake side. Now, I have not put the jug gaskets on or finished putting the piston ring together. Or sorry, not the piston ring, the circlip for the wrist pin because we are just testing right now. But as you can see, here is the notch in the piston right there. And the other notch is around right here. Both pistons should relatively look the same. So I can show you what it would look like. So there's these two openings right there. That one and that one. When it's inside the cylinder, it looks like this. You're not really gonna be able to see it, but see this line right there? Where my finger's pointing? If you have really good eyes, you can see that that is an arrow. That arrow wants to point towards the exhaust side. This means when the pistons go up and down, they do not catch an exhaust or an intake port. You can see where it leaves the line for a little bit of oil. And it goes up and down. I believe that's where they should be. And uh, we're gonna go ahead, finish installing both pistons put the jug gaskets down and then do the cylinders. So we're just gonna pop this back off and you can see on the intake side right here, this little notch that is sticking down, that is where the other, right there, that is where that other piston ring goes to, is right to that notch. You can tell just by the way it is and how it looks. But what you gotta do first before you do the jug gaskets is clean up all this oil. So I just pulled the biggest amateur move. If you're going to install the circlips, please put a rag and cover the crankcase. Went to install one of these clips, slipped out of my hand, fell into the block. I've had this happen to me before. Luckily I was able to tip it upside down, sort of get a pick and stuff and pick it out, but I can't seem to find it this time. I'm gonna keep trying. And if not, we're gonna have to pull everything back apart. All right, now that we have both pistons installed, it's time for the jug gaskets. These things are pretty thin, but uh, how do they go again? Like this. Anyway, we're gonna install those. Put a lot of oil on the cylinder walls. If you don't know how to compress these rings, basically you have to stick your hand in between here, compress the top ring on that little groove I showed you, compress the bottom ring, the jug will slide down, and then 
We're good to go. And then we're going to bolt the head on next. Okay, there we go. We have a fully assembled, fully assembled. We still have to do the front cover, bolt down the flywheel, bolt down the fan, put the fly, or not the flywheel, the starter plate back on, clutch, all that jazz. But we just torqued down the heads. So put the head bolts down, torqued them on a diagonal pattern. And uh, what you're going to want to do, so be this one, this one, this one, this one, because they're separate on either side. Torque them down to 10, then torque them down to 15, and then I went to 17. And then when, after a couple heat cycles, sorry, after a couple heat cycles, we're going to double check the head bolt torque. And we should be good. But next is I'm probably going to mount the front stuff on and i might see if i can compression test it now. okay we got the motor fully assembled i took the i don't know what you call this but the pull start off of the seized motor just put it on this one my casing is actually in my snowmobile that has the pull start the oil injection and all that i still have to do the clutch side the starter intake exhaust covers uh the ignition but I want to compression test it now so that's what we're gonna do that's why I put the pull start on we're gonna get out the compression test okay so we just compression tested this motor it is reading same compression as these ones so this leads me to believe that this compression tester is bad because there's no way the compression is low on this motor if it's got brand new pistons brand new rings every single gasket's brand new cylinders have been honed cleaned everything so i'm gonna call bullshit on that fact that uh the compression is low because when i pulled it over it feels like it's got some good compression so we i think we're gonna take it we're going to finish doing what we got to do, which is seal up the intake, seal up the exhaust, put the covers on. The, they're so weird because the cover has a gasket, so that's why there's so many gaskets because each side needs two. So one goes on here, and then one goes on the other side. Next thing you want to do is we're going to put the cover on. It's easiest to put the cover on when the clutch is off or else you kind of have to pull the heads off, pull the jugs off. Just because where this lip sits, it's just it's just a pain. So what we're going to do, oops, there's these little clips right here. You kind of slip in, and they're going to hold the gasket in place for us because you have to put gaskets inside of here. And uh, you can kind of pry those open because once they tighten onto the engine, they kind of compress. So you kind of need to pull them back out. And then what you do is you just slip this gasket in to either side. You might have to pry them open more. They kind of hold them in place and then you can fit it all on. All right, we're about to install the clutch onto the motor. And I just put some anti-seize on there. So we got the exhaust bolted on. We got the intake port there bolted on I'm gonna wait to do the top cover until I get it in the snowmobile running uh, I gotta bolt the starter on next the motor plate and I think that'll be it and then we can go put it in the snowmobile and hopefully we'll have a good runner we have it the motor fully assembled clutch back on motor plate on starter on exhaust on everything else besides the top cover and this little oil injection pump that goes on the front it's not even an oil injection pump but the two oil lines that go on the front there because it's uh, on the engine no, sorry it's in the snowmobile i never took the lines off so i just took plate off of here and same with the pull start so we're going to take this home and go bolt it into the safari and we're going to hope that she runs good and sounds good. This is the first full rebuild 
on this motor in 10,000 kilometers since it was brand new. Had a couple top ends, but never a full bottom end. So there we go. Here it is. I hope you guys, if you have 377 Safari and you're trying to find some research on how to work on one of these things because there's no information out there at all. Hopefully this helps you guys. We're gonna go put it in and wish me luck that it runs. Well, putting this whole thing back together, I almost did it 100% perfect. That being said, the one long bolt that you're supposed to put on the head, I put it over here. It's supposed to go on this side. So now we just have an empty hole here. So that's my fault. I'm kind of annoyed about that, but I'm not going to go ahead and loosen the head just to switch one bolt around considering this all it does is kind of hold this cover on. We've got these two bolts holding it and we've got all the screws. So yeah, just got to put the belt cover on and should be good to go. All right, not sure if I showed this either, but I installed new heated grips. Came with this little attachment. I got to figure out where to mount that still, but we got the whole thing together. We've already started it one time. So I forgot to plug this plug in, hold on. Okay, it's all plugged in now. Hopefully it's gonna work. Key on. We don't have the electric, oops. We don't have the electric start hooked up, but how many pumps do you guys think? One, two, three might be good. Huh, maybe another pump? Or is it flooded? Hold on.